Hi everyone. So lately I made this video talking about loot filters in Diablo 3 and how they could work, what they could do and these kind of things. And if you haven't seen that video and you're interested, you might want to check it out because uh, I think that Diablo 3 still has a lot of potential for future game updates. And there is another topic that I want to talk about, which are the soul shards. So if you don't know about this, season 25 brought us those soul shards that were socketed into either weapons or helms and they had special powers, they had uh, lots of extra stats. They were very, very powerful. Actually, one of the most powerful season themes we've had. And on top of that, they were probably also the most beloved season theme, even keeping this like power creep part aside. And I figured soul shards would maybe become some kind of permanent feature, something that gives us a bit of less monotony when we put sockets into our helm, which is 99% a diamond and sockets in other weapons, which is 99% an emerald. And they actually gave a bit of extra spice to builds, a bit of customization, something new to try. And I think this is really what most people really enjoyed about soul shards. And there were definitely some really cool effects involved. For example, the anguish explosion effect, the Ring of Fire was definitely something special for the season. There was other things like the Remnant of Pain that was allowing Fawn's builds to have crit chance so you can scale crit suddenly. So there was some really cool stuff involved in my opinion. And I think it's quite sad that after the season ended, the Soul Shards were simply phased out and we're probably not going to see them again. But I think there is definitely potential to salvage this concept and bring it into the core game for the future to uh, give people you know, more customization, bring back those cool effects that they had, and it could just become like another end game feature for people to chase. If you don't know exactly how this worked, you found these soul shards during the season and they had four different ranks. So you start at zero and then you can upgrade them one by one. So they get extra stats at rank one, then they get uh, a second like uh, separate stat on rank two and then finally they get a second effect on rank three that usually interacts with the first effect they have at rank zero. So this is how they worked and as you can see they were extremely powerful obviously so they gained all those uh, regular gem effects plus a little bit more and then they gained like some extra stat in this case like this holy skill damage and then they had these procs on top of it. Now, obviously, this was insane power creep during season 25, and we can't just, you know, release soul shards as they are permanently into the game, because as we had seen in season 25, you know, the, the power level of players was just through the roof. People were doing solo two minute 150s towards the end and stuff like that. So obviously, this is a bit too much, considering that we are supposed to have an infinite scaling greater of difficulty system. So they have to be tuned down. And the good part is that if you keep the power rather low, but you make them exciting with their procs and their effects, it still leaves room for other power creep season themes in the future, similar to Soul Shards or Ethereals or Fourth Cube and these kind of things. So that there is still, you know, room to add more to the game later on. So if I was in charge, what I would do is I would take those Soul Shards and yeah, probably leave their effects plus minus the same. So we have to use rank zero effects. And then we also have these rank three effects that add the second one to it. And I would probably just entirely skip the steps in between. So there's only going to be basically rank zero and rank three. And there's no extra stats. There's no damage, no crit damage, no elite damage, these kind of things. Then there's no second stat that you add, the random one in this case is holy skill damage. But instead you have the effect and you have the other effect. And I would do exactly the same on the helm shards. So we just cut out the first six lines here. So the life and the cooldown and the resource and this kind of stuff, just get rid of it. And then you are left with those special effects so that you just like tune down the power level of things because these are basically just numbers. You know, you can replace the cooldown on other slots. You can run for Gogog or Swiftness if worst case. And the same with the weapon shards, you know, you just tune down the damage numbers a little bit so that we don't have this insane power creep. And if you're worried that yeah, you have to give up the emerald and the weapon and the diamond and the helm, yeah, you will lose a tiny bit there, but you will gain way more powerful effects from those soul shards. Everyone knows how insane some of those procs are. 
and uh, obviously they are going to be way superior anyway. Now there are obviously some effects that would have to be tweaked a little bit. For example, the Ring of Fire from the Terra Shard. It was like the all-defining proc that just changed how the game was played entirely in pushing for almost every build. And I believe this is something that would probably have to be changed to some kind of different effect. Having this for like a season only, you know, like this is season 25 is like the Ring of Fire season. I think this is okay. But having this as a permanent feature, yeah, Ring of Fire would have to be replaced with something else that is like probably more based on like an actual buff or debuff and uh, not so much like an effect that just, you know, kills everything. So this is something that would have to be adjusted in my opinion. Maybe the Terra Shot in general would have to be tweaked a little bit because of how much in reinforced, just mindless button mashing and, you know, face rolling all your cooldowns. And maybe some of those weaker effects could also be buffed a little bit so that, for example, on the Fragment of Destruction, you have one of these procs like in the last line here, which is chance to restore 5% health. I don't think that anyone has ever used this unless they had literally no other gem. Uh, so this would be maybe something to take a look at and, and buff a little bit. Or for example, the Stain of Sin, it was basically only used by support characters and groups and it made group play disproportionately way better with soul shards than with the solo play. Because for example, you had those extra Rift Progress orbs that uh, was actually scaling with the amount of Stain of Sins in the party. So you could get something like plus three or plus four Rift Progress orbs and you could do insanely fast runs. So this is probably some stuff that would have to be tweaked as well. I guess, again, for like the season itself in season 25, an effect like this is okay, but not for like a permanent feature in the game. But in general, I think you got the idea and I believe this would be a really cool system to have in the game to bring back those cool beloved effects to bring back, you know, a bit of experimentation for people to bring back just character customization and also some of those effects that simply made builds way cooler than they are usually. So for example, the Essence of Anguish killing blow effect is probably by far the coolest out of all of these. It single-handedly made some builds like Tempest Rush or Impale like a thousand times more enjoyable because of these extra explosions that you gain on kill. It just feels really good. So I was giving this feedback already way before season 25 ended that this Essence of Anguish explosion effect needs to stay in the game in some form and I'm quite sad to see that the devs have not really done anything about it. I was thinking maybe a new legendary gem or even something like a hellfire ring would have that effect. You know, they could put it anywhere but um, yeah, maybe we just keep it on the sword shards if you bring them back. In any case, I believe that with cutting out the rank 1 and the rank 2 extra stats and then tweaking some stuff like the Ring of Fire, the power creep level of soul shots would be way reduced, but would still be like a sizable upgrade over what we have these days. So I expect that the overall buff for, depending on the build, might be somewhere between like 2 to 8 tiers, I guess, instead of, I don't know what it was, like 10 to 16 tiers uh, in Season 25. So it would be way lower but obviously still a very powerful buff. Now we also have to think about how would you actually acquire the soul shards. So I think this should be something that would be like way in the end game. You know, once you are set up with your build, once you're blasting, full augmented, once you have found some paragons, then you should have, you know, something else to look forward to, to grind in my opinion. Instead of just making them drop from level 1 or maybe level 70, it doesn't matter. I think they need to start dropping way later. So maybe this could be kind of gated behind a certain high greater rift. So maybe you can only find them in solo GR 120 plus or something like that. So that you have a bit of an incentive to not just like speed farm paragons all day, every day, but you actually want to, you know, progress to a higher level. You want to try to, to be more difficult content to then get rewarded by some really powerful drops. Another option would be maybe to finally rework uber bosses and then have some insanely difficult uber boss encounters that also scale up to high GR levels and then those could drop the soul shards. I think this would actually fit the theme way more as well, but I'm not sure if this is ever going to happen. In the end, it depends a bit on the exact design, how powerful they are, and then we can think about, you know, where to put them exactly in like the, the difficulty curve so that they're not really like super accessible from the start. But, you know, as I mentioned, 
This should be a system that is something to look forward to in the end game. Once you have already played your character a little bit. Unfortunately, D3 doesn't really have that many like side content areas, so to say, where we could put them. But in any case, in my opinion, it should be something that is like outside of the regular, you know, typical Nephilim Rift or speed farming GR grind. In any case, just another cool addition that I think that this could make to the game. Bring back the soul shards, you know, tweak them a little bit, nerf them a little bit and, you know, make them awesome. Give us some new tools to, to play with. I think that could really hype up the player base and bring back many people for the following seasons. And we'll see how it will go from there. This is just my two cents on the topic. Let me know what your own ideas are. Maybe you could also think of some other ways that they could be changed or where they would drop and these kind of things. And yeah, maybe the devs will actually pay some attention and who knows. So hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more Diablo content and see you guys next time.